So here on booktube a lot of things are trial and error and my Wednesday reviews were a trial. I wanted to see if I could get more reviews out because I felt I was falling behind in reviews. However it didn't work, it was just a little too much for me to keep up with scheduling and editing and working and life and stuff. So we're going right back to just regular filming. I just might be posting a lot more reviews than other types of videos. Which, to be honest, I'm better at filming reviews anyway, and I enjoy filming reviews anyway, and I get a lot of positive feedback from filming reviews. So, without further ado, here comes another book review. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. As I said in the intro, Wednesday reviews might be gone for now and back to my regular filming schedule. It's just a lot more easy for me to manage and keep up with. Right now you're probably going to be seeing a lot more reviews on this channel because I really like filming reviews and I get a lot of positive feedback from you guys who like the way I do reviews. And I'm a book reviewer, book blogger, so reviews are kind of a main staple for a booktube channel. And I don't feel like we do that enough here on booktube. I still don't think so. I don't find as many reviews anymore and I really just like all the positive feedback you guys are giving me about my reviews. So you're going to be seeing a lot of those right now because that's what I'm filming. Plus they're just a lot more easy to come up with and I have a lot more fun filming them. So enough about that. Let's jump right into the review today. It is one I should have posted a long time ago and that is Fox by Nadine Brandis. Fox was one of my most highly anticipated releases of 2018. I loved Nadine's Out of Time series, although I finished it right up to the release of Fox because it took me forever to find her books, but I loved the first two books because I had read those. When I saw she was coming out with an historical fiction mixed in with like a magical system and a fantasy, I was here for this. I was also here for the time period and the history that it surrounded. It surrounds the Bonfire Night Guy Fox event in London, so November 11th. If you guys have seen V for Vendetta, that's kind of where that came from. I don't recommend that movie for content purposes. We are following Thomas Fox, who is the son of Guy Fox, and they are both Keepers, and this is kind of Keepers versus the Igniters. There is a horrible stone plague that is plaguing England at the time. The Keepers think the Igniters started it, and the Igniters, of course, think the Keepers started it, and it is a constant battle between Keepers and Igniters. Keepers are being persecuted by the Igniter King, King James. What this book essentially was, was a fantasy retelling of the time period where Catholics versus Protestants in England and a lot of the Catholics were being persecuted and there was King James who was a Protestant king on the throne and it kind of follows the Reformation time period. We're following Thomas who has contracted the stone plague and is slowly turning into stone. He believes by getting his color mask from his father and being able to control the color gray, he will be able to control his disease and save himself from the plague. To do this, he kind of gets himself wrapped into the gunpowder plot by his father and several other keepers. Their plan is to, of course, assassinate King James, the igniter king, and put a keeper monarch on the throne. What I loved about this was the history and the time it took that for Nadine to research all that history. This book felt very well researched out. It was creating a fantasy world within a historical time period and within an actual historical setting. So you still get the real world historical setting thrown in with this fantasy element of the colors and the color masks and being able to control colors. It was very well done. I also liked the kind of church history aspect of it. I always thought the Reformation and that time period of church history was super fascinating and the way she implemented that into a fantasy story was so cool. There was moments where I was straight up nerding out from my church history classes from college and relating that to some of the events in Fox and just moments that she mentioned and I was just like I said straight up nerding out on the history that was put into this book. It was overwhelmingly awesome and very well done. I really loved the color system and the magic system in this book. I thought it was very unique and very well done. I like how it is somewhat allegorical. I'm always hesitant to say things are allegorical because I don't want people saying, though this is straight up allegorical and relating it to things and you're like, uh, but you know, 
you know, I'm always hesitant just to say things are allegorical, but there's moments of this magic system that felt allegorical, and I really enjoyed that. I very much loved the characters. All of the side characters were very well placed, very well integrated into the story. You guys know how I like well placed side characters. I don't like characters who are just in there and then they disappear and you don't really know what happened to them or why they were there in the first place. Nadine's were all well placed and had great contributions to the story and just made everything flow really nice and was really well put in there. The main characters were amazing. I loved Thomas. I loved his struggle of what it was going through to kind of find self-worth and acceptance being kind of on the outskirts when people realize he has the plague and kind of being shunned from that and even being as a keeper to kind of being shunned from society. And Thomas goes on a bit of a self-discovery just kind of going through what he places his self-worth in, in his ability to control a color, that it will make him be somebody, that it will kind of solve all his problems, but he kind of finds that's not going to be the way and that's probably not the best way to go about things. I loved the character Emma and just the story arc and the storylines that Emma brought to the full complete story. It was so well wrapped up together. Emma's story brings on a strong and good theme of racism and how people of different color were treated at this time period and just a very important message that was put in through like Emma's place in the book and Emma's story arc and her contribution to the story overall. She was a fantastic character and I loved Thomas and her together. I just loved all of these characters. I loved Guy Fox and how he was written and how you take such an iconic historical person and have to throw them into a fantasy world and all of these things. It was just very well done. The other thing I really appreciated about Nadine's writing was her fantastic sword fights. I always feel sword fights in books are so quickly done and over with that I miss a lot of it and I'm not really drawn into the actual fight. I'm just drawn into the before and after effects of that fight. Her sword fights were amazingly written that I was watching it blow for blow. So I don't know what she did to get such an accurate or to make you feel like you're reading such an accurate description of a sword fight or watching it on a screen on a movie. She did such a good job at just creating her scenes, creating her story and her world and putting these scenes and events in them that made you feel like you were watching them rather than reading them. Of course, I was also listening to the audiobook, so that kind of helped draw out those scenes as well, which I would highly recommend the audiobook. As for content, I'm going to give it a moderate for violence. There was, like I said, sword fights and people dying and people being killed. There's a whole murder plot involved in this whole storyline. It's not a spoiler. It's a historical plot that this is even based on. But there's also persecution against the keepers and public executions. Some of them are a little harsh <laughs> is a way to put it. So some of them are pretty harsh public executions and it gets a little gruesome but not nothing overly graphic. It's just a little ew, like upsetting a little bit to read that of what kind of happened and I believe again it felt very historically accurate to how people were publicly executed at the time. For any other bit of content, 110% clean. That was Fabulous. That was a great romance. That was a great storyline. It was just amazingly done with like no other content problems whatsoever. I was 110% impressed, but Nadine's writing has always impressed me with that, so I didn't have any concerns going in about content. Just a heads up about the violence. Overall, this book is a solid five star rating and one of my favorite books of 2018 so far. I've started making a list of my favorite books of 2018 and this one is sitting pretty close to the top. I loved the engaging story, I loved the amazing characters, I loved the themes and the storylines and the history and it was just amazing. I can't gush enough about this book, I highly recommend it. If you're okay with magic and magical systems and that sort of thing and a little bit, a little bit of violence, I highly recommend this book. I can't recommend it to you enough. I loved nerding out about seeing church history included into a fantasy, but it was still very accurate to actual church history. Like, I can't go on enough about it. So as always, if you guys have any questions about anything I've mentioned in Fox, if you guys have any content concerns, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I will answer all of your questions without spoiling this amazing story for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!